Do you have the list about what number to say? Need a motion. You call this meeting to order? Are we on? We good? Okay. Could I, could I have a uh, motion to win executive session, Kata? Yes. I uh, move that we convene, uh, go into executive session pursuant to one uh, MRSA 405-6A, town manager's contract. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? We're in executive session. Madamic is in there, but not Madamic Five. Try Madamic. I've got Madamic. That's been programmed in it. Um, Madamic Five G. Yes, right. but that's a secured network. network. It's not unsecured. You need a password to get into it. Thank you. I just wrote that today. Okay. Oh, stop the violence. Yeah. <coughs> and maintenance, you get all long right now. <laughs> so anyway, the camera's on. If you want to come out of executive session. I oh, oh, move come out of executive session. Okay, second. 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 Great. All those in favor? Thank you. Now Here's we can it. be off. <laughs> now, my turn. Now we can be off, Jim. Okay. Then take a minute, the Jim. Just a little funny. I was a little sad after yeah. that. A little sad. It's a term of But I'm in a good mood now. Okay. This very moment. At this very moment, moment, I'm in a very good mood. Look at this. You want me to tell a joke? It's my budget stuff. Go ahead. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? Oh. I have a number. I read some funny. Probably shouldn't. <laughs> so if he walks into a bar. Let's see. I can hope I can dance today. Fly me to the moon and let me dance some more. There we go. Look. I think she could dance too. In other words. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the stage, you bum. <laughs> Apparently, I can't sing either. I tried to yeah, entertain. I, 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 I got my guitar out the other night. I did. I got my guitar out the other night. I was playing away and with them. Myself. But who says you're not? My husband. <laughs> I listen to him. Uh, he's just a, he's a packet. Yes. Well, it wasn't in mine. It was no. funny. But I don't. <laughs> Get him to join you. But we need to have Did he sing? Oh, Not well. <laughs> That's part of it. Oh, this is all I got. Yeah. Okay, those are the comments that the lawyer had. Well, if you needed more, all you have to do is tell me. If it's requested, I print out things. If it's not, I got it in my packet, so she's got it in her. What are you looking for? No, your packet is special because you don't have a computer. What? I have a computer, I just don't have a print. <laughs> right. Oh. I guess. Yeah. My computer won't print. Well, then I can but do it for you, too. I don't need to. I read it. I read it. I like how I read it. I can read it. I, can do it. I um, my phone can print. Mm -hmm. my, I can print from my phone, but I can't from computer. He doesn't like trees. I like trees. On the yeah. ground, chopped up. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like no, if anybody wants them, it's just he has said he can't print, so he gets. I don't print this stuff. I don't print Do all you that want stuff. that? No. Okay. Well, he wants. I it. like trees. He wants. I can't it. stare at a. Actually, I'm having problems with my phone now. I used the little phone, and then I do this. I have to do this. Yeah, you can do this. You go. And then you have to go. Yeah. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. For a short period of time, then I get oh. aggravated, and then I don't. I hear feedback. <laughs> I'm a patient person. There are very few things I'm patient at. That isn't one of them. It's almost like state government, ain't it? Close. Huh? We're usually a half an hour, 45 this minutes, and fine. <laughs> Not just 10 minutes. 
I'm doing good. <laughs> Did you fix it, Mike? We just unplugged it. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's just a monitor. It's not it's recording. So we're all set, Jim? Yep, all set. Okay. 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 Pledge of allegiance. First item on the agenda is a public hearing, liquor license for Josh and Sarah Pike, Topsoil Farm. Topsoil. Topsoil, sorry. Open this public hearing. Do I have a motion on that? Make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Any public comments? I'm here to speak about it. <laughs> Could you come up yeah. for the lectern, sure, please? No I assume all cell phones are off. Add in yours too? Yes, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, well, thank you for um, listening and um, discussing this. So I was wondering what sort of background would be helpful um, in general about the operation and sort of what we have. Or Just want to tell us a little bit about your place. Okay, so um, we opened last, uh, last fall, last summer, um, for on Bremen Road. Um, we have a state licensed uh, campground with 10 sites, um, a lot of yoga retreats, um, families, that sort of thing, um, and uh, we got our um, our uh, approval last fall for um, 15 mass gatherings per year um, on the property. We have one wedding scheduled for this summer, um, and um, as part of the licensing process that we're going through with the state for our um, commercial kitchen, which is in the new barn that's on. Um, uh, on the property. Um, we also uh, got approval for beer and wine retail, which will be um, focused on our guests um, on property. So um, limited hours and um, as part of our um, expanded operations to offer snacks, um, chips, s'mores, you know, fixings, that sort of thing for our guests. So in working with um, the state licensing um, commission Craig McCabe in talking through the context of the operation and what we're hoping um, to do um, he suggested it was the beer and wine retail which will be operating out of our um, new uh, camp store that we just had permitted and built this past week um, uh, next to the barn so it's the beer and wine retail um, is in process with the state right now and so in addition to that, um, because people will be purchasing beer and wine and taking that to their campsite and you know enjoying that there, um, that is covered under the beer and wine retail. Um, with our commercial kitchen license um, that we um, have in process, um, we are going to start doing small gatherings, um, meals, you know, a barbecue for our guests. Um, bingo, you know, in the barn and game night, that sort of thing. And as part of that, um, the recommendation was that we apply for the bottle club facility so that um, they purchase at the retail store, enjoy it at their campsite, and are then able to um, consume it for the limited number of events that we would be having at the barn. Um, we are limited from a mass gathering standpoint to 15 a year, so from a quanta quantifiable um, standpoint, um, it would not be more than that. And for the majority of those um, mass gatherings, which would be weddings, um, um, we have a sugar shack supper coming up um, uh, in March. Um, those, um, the majority of those would be with a licensed caterer who has their own catering um, a license already. So, for example, the one wedding that we have this summer, Harvest Moon Catering is catering it, and they will be the licensed entity that will be um, distributing beer and wine. So, this bottle club um, application is for the small handful of events that we would be hosting ourselves um, in conjunction with the food preparation with the commercial kitchen and um, 
from my com lengthy conversations with the um, liquor inspector at the state, it felt like this was the right way to go. Okay. Any questions? Any comments from the board? Bob? Yeah, how do you distinguish between your folks on site and folks who drive by on 32 and decide they want to go in and have a beer? Um, that that's not the cut that the 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 unless we're having a public event so for example the sugar shack supper or bingo Thursday night or you know something like that where we're advertising and drawing people in there's no open sign there's no this is just for guests of the property so I'm just trying to draw a clear line here yeah if I you're not going to have signs up that say you might have a sign up that says we're doing game night tonight. But um, will you have a sign up that says beer available? No. Game night? Correct. No. Okay. No. Just it's to be strictly sure. for um, a I benefit for the paying guests that we have um, on right. property. Yep. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Uh, just a um, point of curiosity. You used the term retail license mm -hmm. and that you would sell beer and wine to clients who are going to their campsites. Correct. Does that in any way differ from the retail site of the uh, community store of the village, was it the Waldo Country Store or something like that where just as far as the license is concerned, anybody can go and buy beer whether or not they're there. Is there a difference I don't think the there's license? a difference with that license. Yeah, that one we don't need town approval for, so that one we're working for the <coughs> state. Um, the, the approval tonight is for the Bottle Club facility Only. specifically. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? I have a motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Can you act on the liquor license? Make a motion to accept the uh, liquor license. Put Second. Put on. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number four, adjustments to the agenda. I have two quick claim deeds from Julie, and do you, do you have something, Bob, you wanted? Just, so um, uh, just sort of a, an update on the Sylvania mission. Okay. And that could go under new business is 10.2, if you wish. Okay, 10.2. And I have a comment to make about, um, oh, sorry. No, 10.3 would be a discussion of the shared services agreement and the new ordinance. They are on, sorry, it's on there. It's already on there. 9.1. Right. So I'm good. So what is 10.2? Sylvania. Sylvania. Sylvania update. Oh, oh. Mission update. Sylvania mission update. Okay, so we have to add 10.2, Bob's discussion on the mission statement from Sylvania, right? And 10.3 would be the quick claim deeds. Should I have a motion on that? Make a motion to accept 10.2 uh, Sylvania update and 10.3 quick claim deeds. A second. So, discussion. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, citizens' comments. Seth. Uh, Seth Hall, resident. Um, just a couple of things. The, um, I'm happy to announce, as a small business owner, you may have guys have seen this, uh, we made a press announcement on the 21st. First, we, s and Lama, that we're starting our second business in town. Um, we have created something called the Bug Tussle Annex in the third floor, working, working with Sam Pennington on the third floor of the former taxing building. And we just wanted to let you know that uh, We've been pressed into service more than a month early, and the WBA is going to be meeting there tomorrow night for their annual meeting. I guess the pipes froze or something at the 13 uh, Friendship Street, and you're all welcome to come by. It's not set up yet, but if you'd like to come by and, and join us, you'll get to see what the uh, shape of the space looked like. It's pretty nice. It's almost 4,000 square feet, and we're really excited. And if anybody has any questions, offline or otherwise, about the press release, if you haven't seen it, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm aware of that space. It's a big mm -hmm. space up there. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. the old Odd Fellows Hall, I think, right? It was years and years ago, turn of century, something like that. So, where it'll be the first co-working space 
of its kind in the mid coast. Buzz Main is a little similar, but we hope to be a little more comprehensive and a little more high tech. So we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. I worked well, in that space for 15 years. Hmm. Okay. Seeing none. Slide board comments. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to mention that um, as very soon, they don't give us a date in their missive to us. At least I didn't see one. Did you, Julie, regarding the hauling of solid waste up to the crossroads? Starting April 1st. It is going to start April That's 1st. That's what I thought I read. Okay. That's when it's supposed to start. Um, we, we terminate our relationship with PERC and we start a new relationship with Fiberite and the Fiberite plant isn't quite ready so instead of hauling to the plant we're going to be hauling up to the Crossroads landfill in Urge Walk and the distances are about the same uh, I don't there should, there should be a rate, a rate adjustment in what we're paying the hauler and um, yeah they've, they've it's, it's, it's exciting to know that they're setting this up and that they're moving forward with it and that our stuff is actually going to go up there and it's going to go into a landfill at first, not what we wanted. Uh, it was being burned when it went to Perk, uh, but uh, when they get their plant up and running, then it will be manufactured into usable products. So, thank you. Is there an estimated time for that to be they're, up and running? They're looking at uh, three to six months. I've heard as far out as six months. Uh -huh. So, I don't know. Okay. Any more select board comments? Do you have anything? Well, I, I do have something. Um, it has to do with dogs. I'm not a dog owner, but I'm a dog lover. But I, I've gotten calls, and uh, I've seen that there are people interested in a dog park in Waldboro. I've seen that written. I'm not sure who the folks are, but I had seen that written, and um, I thought that was an interesting concept. I know nothing about that, but I thought maybe it's uh, it'd be worth a conversation at some time. But I have gotten calls. There are a number of people from downtown Waldboro in the on Main Street area and School Street and some of those other areas who have found, um, I think they're dog watchers or maybe the dog owner watchers. Um, they're watching people not cleaning up after their dogs and they say it's it's quite messy and have um, there are certain spots in town that people take their dogs and let them relieve themselves on sidewalks and that sort of thing. I, um, I and, and it was a very nice, the calls have been very nice, but there are a number of people who are concerned about that and certainly with um, runoff towards the river, it's not a good thing. With um, people coming to town and looking around at town, you don't want to have, you want to have a tidy town, not a dog crap town. Um, and particularly right in town, some of the and some of the dog owners, the um, who do take care of their dogs, uh, are complaining. And these are actually our dog owners and dog walkers. And a lot of those <coughs> storm drains do run straight directly into yeah. the river. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they all go right into those. And, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's so there are multi issues there, and uh, uh, they're not sure. They asked, "What can we do about this?" And so, you know, I, I gave just a couple suggestions, but. Um, I thought it's worth a conversation. It is worth a conversation. Mm -hmm. I do have something. But, um, oh, yeah, yeah. The marijuana committee up in Augusta has come out with a bill, I guess, for the most part, it's been agreed upon, and we'll be knowing something really soon about what's going to be uh, happening, whether, it, whether what they voted out of committee will be approved or not. Mm -hmm. so. So you no mail to some information on yep. that? <clears throat> well, they just voted it out yeah. on Friday, so yeah. so it hasn't. I don't know if it's actually been printed exactly what the. Oh, this is just some of the committee's uh, comments. That specific, you know, all, proce all proceeds to the state. Yep. That was, yep. Yeah. But it's coming soon, real yep. soon. Good. So, I know that's a big issue here. So. Mm -hmm. Have anything, Katie? No, no I'm all set. Okay. Julie. I just have a couple of things. Working on the budget, that's been a lot of fun. Um, we also have, um, it was brought to my attention, I haven't done the, the most recent newsletter, so I apologize for that. Um, so I think we should need to work on the spring newsletter, and I, um, since it's during the budget, it would be a, I think it would be a, each, a great idea if each one of you penned something for the newsletter. Um, 
And, you know, because each of you have such uh, varied interests and you all do such different things in the community, I don't think people really realize um, exactly all that you're involved in. They see you once, um, twice a month on, a, on the, you know, here at the select board, but I don't think they realize on a day-to-day -day basis how much interaction we have and what you're actually involved in. So I kind of thought that would be something neat to do. Um, try and make it more fun than just the basics, you know, clean up after your dog, da 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 da. So um, I think that would be great. And it also was brought to my attention, um, thank you, Jan, um, that when we have the committees in, it might be nice to invite the full committee instead of just the chairman. That way, if the full committee is here, there might be a lot more questions or give and take. Um, so I think the next, when we start with the, back up with the committees, because we've almost been through all of them, uh, I think we have conservation next. Ask them to come and you know just realize there's going to be a 15 to 20 minute portion of the meeting because you're going to have more people. And I thought that was a great thing to point out that hey, you know we should probably have that, and I, I think that would be something nice to do. Mm -hmm. okay. Consent calendar. Make a motion to accept a consent calendar with the numbers of the warrants that weren't on your uh, agenda. Uh, yeah. Warrants number 60, 61, 62, 63. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Thank you. Number nine, old business. Shared services agreement and shared solid waste disposal ordinance. Well, as you know, we sent this off to the attorney, and I am pleased to announce, because Bob won't say this publicly, there was only four very tiny corrections in all of Bob's handiwork. So I was actually quite impressed by that. So uh, they did review it, they only had four comments. So. That was a really great job by you and the transfer committee and John Daigle. Yeah. It really was. <coughs> I thought it was a great well, thank group. Thank you effort. to the attorney. Um, do you want to? Do we want to take next steps with this now? I think you should. We need to set a, a hearing date, I think, and I I believe it would be mostly um, efficient to include Walderboro, Cushing, and Friendship on that hearing. Yes. And then set a time for an open town meeting. And if we include all three towns in that meeting, I don't think it's ever been done before. But it would be cool if we could do it. If there, I don't know what the problems are logistically, or whether it's even smart idea. But otherwise, we each have to approve it, town by town. I'm right. going to say that Eileen and I will need to work on the joint. Okay. All right. But we probably ought to set set a date for the for the for the public hearing. You got something in mind? Fiber right does start up on April 1st. Okay. So match for sure. Yeah. Um, Looking for a first or second can the, meeting? Can the public hearing go a week before we have the, the meeting, the open town meeting? Technically, because it's an open town meeting, you do not need a public hearing because the public discusses things at the town meeting. If you want a public hearing to make a change or whatever it is, that's fine. But there is no, I just need before the actual town meeting, we need to post seven days. Seven days. So whatever you want to schedule for to a public meeting. hearing, and then allow, you know, some kind of posting out there And I, I don't know how you would do the joint town. I have to look into that. Because, That's, uh, yeah. yeah because um, each town clerk would have to check in their own. And I know that that was a question that Joel and I briefly discussed. Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing you do up at SAD 40 right. when they have their budget hearing. Each town clerk is there to check mm -hmm. in their allowed voters. So, but whether, whether like friendship would have a majority of friendship people if you co, because up there you co-mingle all the votes. Right. Um, and I think friendship has to adopt it. And just the friendship people there, you have to have a count of yeses and noes for friendship versus, and I guess you could set something up with little collection boxes for each town, and each town would have its counters. Um, it's something to be looked at because you know, it's never been done that I'm aware of. I think I'm breaking again. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got a date in mind, though, but you've got a calendar there. Yeah, um, if we had a if we had a vote, and working backwards, if we set the vote date for 
for March either the 27th or the 20th. We have a board meeting on the 20th. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the time to do it. That'd be a good idea. To vote, to actually vote on it at that time. Fund me. That you're saying is the town meeting. The right? town meeting would be on the, say, the 27th. Right. The, oh, the 27th. Not sorry, the sorry, sorry, the 20th. The 20th. Yep. Okay. And then we, we have to post that a week before. Right. So we have to post it on the 13th. Seven days before the town meeting. Okay. And so you need to, what's the first meeting in March? The first meeting in March is the 6th. So if you saw, if we had a warrant prepared that you would sign, and whether you hold your public, you know, hold hearing, the public hearing at the same time? At the same time as you're signing your warrant for the language here, um, that could possibly work. You just have to, if you are going to try no, to have each town yeah, with the 13. same day, you've got to have March 13th is the our first meeting. Right. March 13th is our first meeting in March. Yeah. Seven days before, yeah, so that's probably. <coughs> well, we can do that now. We just, just, a little bit before that. just have to post it. So you want it on March 13th now? Well, the, the select board meeting isn't on the 20th, obviously. It'll be on the 27th. Yeah. Yep. So it'd have to be posted by the 20th? Yeah, it would have to be posted by the 20th. Okay. That works. So we have the warrant prepared for the, the meeting of the 13th. the 13th. Do the public hearing at the same time. And give notice of the public, of the of the open town meeting on the no later than the twentieth, and have the meeting on the twenty seventh. It gives Julie time to figure out all the logistics. Right? Yeah, figure out the logistics with the other two with the other two towns. Right. So we'll, we might as well have a motion on that right now. Get that out of the way. Okay. So the motion is to um, have the warrant prepared and ready to vote on for this with this board on the thirteenth of March and to hold a public hearing um, on the 13th of March as well, to notice the, pub the open town meeting on, at no later than the 20th of March, and the open town meeting would then be held on the 27th of March. Okay, I'll second it. Discussion? No good, Jan? I'm good, okay. yep, got it. Seeing none, all those in favor? Thank you. Yes. So, in terms of thinking of this as a free town or whatever it is, should we be looking at Miller School? Some school, to yeah. Making arrangements that we want to use Miller School on the 27th again. Good with that. Yep. yep. We're going to try and do three towns. Mm -hmm. If that's possible. If it's possible. Yes, if it's possible. Okay. 9.2, return to work policy. I distributed to you what um, revisions that select board member <coughs> Butler had. <coughs> and it started out as the one last item um, that we added. And it's went through a little bit of a revamp. The changes that you suggested, are they in here? It's all his. Well, no, because no. Julie and I had some good conversations, yes. and, and you yeah, straightened me out a few times. But, <laughs> but that's <laughs> what we agreed on well, when we met. Partially. Do you want me to go over what you had previously agreed on? 
Yes. Okay. Because nothing is out. Bob the added, so. "This is the we now have a purpose, and the, and it is the retire in place policy governs how the town may allow qualified employees to continue working in their current positions of employment after retiring. This policy does not confer on any employee a right to retire in place, and um, that was just simply stated before in in it." Um, the application, um, we didn't have an application before. Bob suggested an application um, which would um, require the employee to write a letter of request to the select board, and the letter must explain the reasons for the request and state the uh, proposed effective date of retirement. Uh, determination of status, um, Bob thought it, it's strictly a select board decision. Um, however, I, and Bob, you can correct me anytime I'm wrong. <laughs> um, however, he felt that the town manager should have a voice in that um, and he actually put that in writing whereas before it was strictly just you you know your decision um, they have to submit a resignation letter which is the same as they they had to do before and it has to be not less than 30 days um, employees retire in place and statement shall become effective at 12 a.m. not less than 30 days after the employee um, retires um, Again, there's no union membership. Um, the salary is the 75% of the salary at the time of retirement. Um, the term, the employment contract term may be, may be for one year, renewable in increments of one year, but shall not exceed five years in aggregate. Uh, and the town manager may immediately terminate a retiring place employee at any time with or without notice or cause. Non-accrual, any vacation and personal or sick time accrued to a retiring place employee prior to the rehire date shall not carry forward and retire in place term. Um, so there's no way, and, and technically, um, there are changes that are made um, through MPERS about this. Um, and that was one of the things, is that you're no longer, you, you cannot carry any time forward. Um, health insurance, this is where Bob and I got into a bit of a conversation. Um, employees, retire in place employees may be enrolled in the town's health coverage if they qualify for coverage based on the personnel policy. Retire in place employee dependents shall not be eligible for coverage under the town's health insurance plan. Retire in place employees may opt out of the town's health insurance plan and qualify for a cash in lieu health insurance payment pursuant to the personnel policy. In lieu payment will be for the employee only. Um, and then the, what started out as the original <laughs> um, revision was the town shall comply with all applicable applicable main state statutes and main um, public employees retirement system rules. So the reason originally for the town compliance was that as the rules change, we don't want to have to do that every single time. Okay. We don't want to have to change something every time. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, it didn't look... It, it's much. very similar. Say, it it's very similar, but it's much, it's, yeah. it's, it's more in depth. Yeah. What, yeah. what was changed? Mm -hmm. so. A lot of the, the wording that helps it make it more clear yeah the discussion we more had words. was around the health insurance I mean that was really the meat of the discussion mm -hmm. and I was troubled that if we allowed someone to retire in place and they had a health insurance option that we couldn't require them to take that option instead of be part of our health insurance so for example if they were if they qualified for Social Security and Medicare we, under this policy, we still have to offer them our policy with the town. It's not, we don't have to offer them the policy. <laughs> it's that we have to offer them the policy, whether or not they're covered by Medicare. Well, and, and that apparently is re required by state law. But even, state but law. even <clears throat> if they had another policy, that's why we have the in lieu to make it an incentive for them not to take. Them not to, and yeah. that Which troubled me too. Yeah. Yeah. We shouldn't have to. Anyway, it is what it is, and I, yeah. I agree with Julie. And at some point, we will be looking at health insurance anyway. So, yeah, time to move forward. So. We can have a final vote on this now, I guess. Well, I'm going to have to post it. Okay. So, okay. but you, you should approve it, and then mm -hmm. we'll have the final adoption after it's posted and everything's been distributed properly. Because okay. it's so significantly, it's it's different than what right. had originally. So I move it for po that we approve it for posting. A second. Discussion. All those in favor? Thank you. New business 10.1. Discussion of creation of recreation committee. 
Um, this came up because, as you know, um, I attended and so did Jan at the invitation of Kyle Santhison, the Madomic Valley Community Foundation's meeting um, that they were having. Um, and um, I also met um, privately with um, John Blamey um, after the fact um, to, to chat with him. Um, and uh, Kyle was gracious enough to come up with some, um, an outline for us moving forward. I think it was a, discussed at the community foundation meeting that maybe there needed to be a, a renewed spirit of cooperation. And um, one of the ways to do that, because I, I think that there was a misunderstanding, from my point of view, there was a misunderstanding that, you know, perhaps the select board wasn't in favor of a community center. I never got really that vibe that they were not in favor of a community center. I think they were questioning more the location of the community center. Um, so I think um, what came out of that meeting that was good was that there was a recommendation that um, the select board set up a recreation committee that could actually look at a community center, um, possible locations for it. Um, not saying that A.D. Gray is the place for it, but different things. Um, and it was it was great because I think there was a nice uh, conversation um, relating to we have to be cooperative in this effort. Um, so one of the suggestions was that we have to open the lines of communication. Um, the establishment of the recreation committee um, and because we need to garner public support for it and Kyle you can just you know interject anytime you want um, but um, good um, so there we actually do need to have public support for this and um, it did get a little bit I think um, off the rails um, so I think this way we can gauge the support we can evaluate um, you know the different sites develop plans um, and I, and I think that's, I, I think that's what needs to happen. Um, I, I got the sense that um, there was disappointment um, that maybe the AD Gray plan didn't move forward further with the select board. Um, I stood my ground and basically said that I, I couldn't support that at this time. Um, and we don't know what we're doing yet with AD Gray. Um, we are currently, um, Max and um, Bill are still formulating some of the um, plans and ideas to present back to you, and that'll be at the next meeting. Um, so that's basically where we are. There'll be a fundraising plan and, and things like that, but I think the first step is to create this committee. Um, you should determine how many people should be on it. Um, we can put out, just like we do with any of the other committee, um, positions will put out um, a recommendation a, a call for people to put in their applications um, and, I, and I think it would be a good thing I, I think one of the things that Kyle really said that um, when I you know asked Kyle some questions about the uh, original ball fields and things was that it was such a community um, event there was so much involvement by the community and um, one of the things I said to Seth was you know it was sad you know, when people were coming to the meetings, it was just one person standing up. You know, there wasn't, the committee wasn't even here supporting um, A.D. Gray. And it's it's great, you know, and I'll, and I'll say this publicly, it's great to say on Facebook, I support a community center. Um, one of the problems I had, though, is how do I, how do I gauge what that's going to cost? And people are going to maybe say, yes, I want a community center, but when it comes time to pay for the community center, the reality of that hits them. And what, what are they willing? to pay for a community center. So I, I think that those are the things that the um, Recreation Committee could um, could benefit the town in th its creation. And I also think, too, that um, our Recreation Director, Marcus, when we talked about the Recreation Committee, you know, and it, it might even have a, a scope a little larger than just, you know, the community center, because I'm sure there's times he'd like to have feedback from key members of the community about what they'd like to see. So. Um, I just thought it was a great conversation. Um, 
you know, maybe not have started out real well, but I think we ended on a high note. Um, but I thought, you know, it went it went over overall very well, and I loved the recommendation that Kyle made about the committee, um, and I think that was a, a good thing. And I did forward you his email, his and John's email, um, for your consideration. Does does the board need some time on this to come up with numbers or do this? <coughs> Kyle, you have a recommendation there. by any chance? Um, sure. If you want me to yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to come yeah. talk at the le the lectern. The <laughs> she shouted from the corner. Um, I, I come from multiple hats here. Obviously, you know that I was the recreation director here from 2005 um, to just last year. The the recreation committee is not a new thing. This is an old thing. The Recreation Committee existed for many, many years in the town of Walderboro. Back when, and I, I don't know when it was originally established. I know that it was up and running in 96 when, when the land was acquired over behind the Miller School for the new recreation complex. Um, that committee worked feverishly for years and years and years developing plans. Um, What's it going to be? What's it going to look like? What's our what's our philosophy? How do we set this up? Uh, the Madonna Valley Community Foundation came on board in 2003 as a fundraising avenue to help support the um, purchase of the of the of the plan. We used it, at one time we had a three phase plan for ball fields, running a, you know a track around the fields, etc., and eventually a building. Um, Obviously, phase three is a it's, a it's a big nut to crack here. So, um, I, I mean, I, I think it's very, very important. I think that the town be involved in the planning process and not a, you know, not the private organization that does all the, does, that's doing the fundraising. I mean, it needs to be a partnership. And, and that's what we had there for when the foundation came on board of 2003, four, five, and six, seven. Um, the foundation did a lot of fundraising. The foundation, I mean, the, the committee did a lot of planning. It all came together. They ran down the track, you know, at the same speed at the same time. And, um, you know, the select board was walking hand in hand with the town manager, which was walking hand in hand with the, with the foundation. And we, you know, poof, in 2008 opened, you know, beautiful recreation complex. Um, you know, to, to, see a, to see a community center developed, it really needs to come grassroots effort. I mean, we all saw what happened when the Y came in, said what they were going to do, and then left. One of the primary reasons that they decided to abandon that project is they felt that there wasn't enough grassroots effort support from the community. I think a lot of people felt that they were just waiting around for the Y to do what they were going to do, and, um, and that's what happened. They said, yeah, okay, good, we're good, we're, we're out of here. So if we really are serious about a community center in the town of Walderboro, the people need to want it. So there you go. That's my two cents. What about what was the previous size, or do you, do you recall? Uh, I was, uh, I believe, it was a ten-member committee somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it fluctuated like all committees do. Um, you know, it was generated originally with, and I'm guessing here, I, I can't remember the exact membership if there was a standard membership, but it was, it was in the neighborhood of ten people there at, at the onset. Um, that were, you know, that had a, you know, a, an interest in wanting to see this project <coughs> carry forward, and, you know, lots of lots of things need to be done before I think a decision goes to the town to make a final, you know, if we're going to vote on a project to accept that there's there's, there's got to be a lot of, analyzation, so to speak, is is 80 gray the right place? Is 80 gray the not right the right place? Is the ball field, big building, small building? I, I don't know what that looks like. There's a, there's a million things to look at. And that's what I think it would be a great thing, for, you know, uh, you know the, we had a committee, we disestablished the committee, just so in case you wonder where it went. They ran out of things to do. Um, the ball fields were up and running, everything was looking good. Um, I was doing whatever I had to do and I was regurgitating my, my weekly routine to them. And one, you know, one meeting everybody said, what are we doing here? Why are we doing, they're doing a great job, fine. So, we, so they moved to, to disestablish the committee, they kind of ran out of, Things to do, and I think they have a they have a new charge now to be able to come forward and maybe come up with a plan you know, for your consideration. Any questions, comments? No, go ahead. 
Bob, Ed. Go ahead. Um, just thinking about this, 10, because it's an even number, so you don't really want an even number on a board. No, well, whatever, so, whatever number yeah. is sufficient. Eight, ten. I just got a suggestion seven, of nine. Of nine. Yeah. Um, the rec director should be on there. I remember from the the Adon Valley Community Foundation should be on there, and this, the rest, the other seven should be residents. Absolutely. I mean, that's I mean, it needs to just be the make up that I you can get. I mean, easily you, come up with. I mean, you need people from, you know, sound? you need youth, yeah. I mean, youth uh, membership. I think you need um, senior citizen membership. You need people from all, from the cross section of the town. Um, you really do, to, to, to gauge what it is, um, what it is we need, what it is we want. What does it look like? That's, that's kind of, you know, there are plans that sit on the shelf today. I mean, you know, the town spent quite a bit of money, uh, and the foundation raised quite a bit of money to establish plans back in the 2002 time frame uh, with Orchid and Associates to uh, have an architect come in, do conceptual drawings, do a conceptual plan. All those plans still sit ready to be evaluated. Um, do you have something, Mark? Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Given that the community center itself, which is part of the baseball field complex, mm -hmm. there was a plan for a center there too. Yes, there was. What? Why did they run out of steam? Why did they Ooh. suddenly stop? Well, the I, I mean, the initial, the initial phase three cost was up over four million dollars. I think that when, when they reached the, um, when we reached the ball field. And it was a sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, and those people, I can tell you, and, and Jim, you can chime in here because it, uh, it was like, wow, job well done, guys. Whew. Now what? Well, there, there were also <clears throat> some issues with the uh, wetlands back in there. Now it's going to cost quite a bit of money. You have to get yep. DEP approval, and it was going to be expensive. Yeah, I can say that. So it was, we did kind of come step, to think of that. Yeah, we step back and say, okay. You know, how many times are you going to go to a well? Can we make this really happen based on what we're seeing for numbers? So, mm -hmm. to Kyle's point, yeah, we kind of like took a break. Right. Moving into phase two over there, which meant going across the wetlands. Yep. Um, we were already into tier two of BEP <laughs> wetland permitting. Um, any other disturbance over there needs to go to tier three, and when that goes to tier three, if you understand anything about DEP, which I don't understand any of it, but um, it just means a lot more money basically and a lot more paperwork and a lot more <clears throat> engineering to properly do what you got to do over there to, to be able to just get across to the other side so you can have a road or a or what you know access to the other side then start building now we we had a meeting with John Daigle about this and he said we thought we could do that we could build a road across there mm -hmm. To access absolutely the usable oh, oh, yeah. portion oh, of the oh, it can be done. So, oh, but I think the town could do it, which would save the town crew could do it. Oh, absolutely! It's, it's a huge not a matter of, of it's not a matter of getting it's not a, it's not the nuts and bolts. It's it's right. the planning and the permitting. Yeah. It's and like we, I said, DEP has to get involved. We discussed that with Johnny about doing that. He thought mm -hmm. it could be done, no problem. You know. However, you still have to go through the permit. Right, right. exactly. Yeah, that's right. the killer. Yeah, yeah. and it's again stormwater management plans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, yeah. I mean, the book yeah. is in Marcus's office for, yeah. for for what we did before, just to get the ball fields done. It was yeah. four inches thick with plans and permitting and, um, you know, it's, wet it's quite involved. Meetings. Oh yeah. Oh, it's it, it is very long. Yep. So. Do you want to make that motion? Well, can you make a motion that we get a committee? All right, I'll make a motion we create a recreational committee. Do you want me to comprise it yeah, as well? Right. Um, mm -hmm. Number of nine members and one being the rec director, one from the Medaunt Valley Community Foundation as a member, and seven town residents. I'll to make that motion. Discussion? Yes, sir. JD? No, he seconded it. Oh, I thought you would. Do you have something, Seth? Yes, uh, I probably have a lot to say, but I'll keep it very brief. As not only the principal instigator of the rejuvenation of this whole conversation, I think we can probably agree that that's the case, I'm strongly supportive of John's suggestion that uh, a, a town committee working in cooperation with the town and the board and the town manager look at this seriously. Um, during the meeting, which I was there for, we, and as Julie and both Kyle and Julie have said this evening repeatedly, the conversation wasn't so much about a recreation committee, but a community center. That was the language that was used. They've used it extensively tonight. 
And I would strongly encourage you to think of it that way, because that's the way we were thinking of it, uh, centered initially around the conversation about the 80 Gray Building, but principally something more broad by definition than just a rec center. The rec center was, in fact, phase three of the original Walterboro project. Kyle's exactly right. It was going to be up on the hill. Uh, another thing in answer to Bob's concern, 2008 happened economically, and that's another huge impact. This, the economy melted down. Everybody just had a heck of a time, including the town. So we should take that into consideration. These economic times are very, very difficult. Uh, and of course, uh, John Blamey had his health issues as well. So the steam, at least on the foundation end of things, sort of dissipated as basically Kyle suggests. So I would very strongly suggest that the committee not be, perhaps you could offer a friendly amendment, a recreation committee, but a community center committee. I don't think it has to be particularly focused on A.D. Gray, but any available resources, whether they're financial or physical. One of the strong considerations of the community foundation was the centrality of the 80 Gray site. And as you know, John Daigle's, one of his interesting suggestions was knock it down and build a new one. He thinks it'll be cheaper. Uh, we didn't concur with that. Uh, but regardless, the committee could look into all those things in, in great depth, which I think would be a great thing. But it does have the advantage of being right in town. And as we know from the Walden, Day, the Walbro Day experience in the last couple of years, that's an extremely popular response from the people that come to Walbro Day. And the committee would look at that kind of thing too, I would assume. So I strongly support the idea of a committee. I think a nut, number nine is a good one. Um, I guess that's what I have to say. Okay. More discussion from the board? Sorry. Sorry. I, I have a, a question for Kyle, I think yep. it was. Um, you mentioned and can, can you just go up to the lectern and just state your name and address for the it's record? Very first meeting. I know I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry, but we get in trouble if we don't do it the right way. My, my question is for Kyle. So come on up. So come yeah, go ahead too. Um, you mentioned and Julie mentioned when you were talking about a recreation committee going beyond just a community center. And so if it's a community center committee, does that mean it's only going to focus on the center? And then if the center That's gets up and going, then it goes away just like it did before? I, I would Can say definitely not. That would not be my recommendation. I would say that if we're establishing a recreation committee, that they're going to look at all facets. And, and Marcus, you certainly should jump up here and join us. Um, Come on up, everybody. Um, <laughs> Come on up, Marcus. This is, this is, I don't want to steal Marcus's thunder here, but um, another... another uh, you tell them why you want a recreation committee. Jump right in there. Yeah, the yeah, recreation Marcus, committee ahead. was something I'd thought about before this all transpired. It crossed my mind. I knew we used to have one. I knew other towns had them. And as I tried to get stuff going, it at times it became difficult to find volunteers or to come up with some new ideas. I only have so many in my brain. Um, so a committee kind of was on my mind when it got brought up um, at the community foundation meeting. I thought it was a great idea and that I could maybe piggyback off that and use it in the future to not only help me, um, but help grow whatever we decide to do as a committee. And I can bounce ideas off them, they can help me you know, get volunteers. I know the big thing I tried to do this year was to get that ice rink up and going, and when it came time to, to lift <laughs> that 600 pound tarp, I was calling on friends and family because volunteers weren't there. Um, so it'd be great to have, yeah, and Abdi, Abdi was there. <laughs> so. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was a big deal. Abdi's always there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Eileen? Uh, I was going to say, can we, why can't it be a recreation committee that the board tasks with right. community right. center? Well, I think yeah. that's, that's after we yeah. develop the committee, yeah, I think that's. Yeah. That, Flows yeah. into it. And that, that was my that, thought. That with would, it. It was that once it's, if, it, if you decide to and it is formed, the first task would be to look into that, and then okay. after that. I, I was just going to suggest you come up with a mission statement. Once the committee's formed, mm -hmm. you guys set what you want to do, and then yeah. come back to us with a mission statement. Yep. Goals, goals, mission statements. Yeah, I get it all down there. Yeah. And that's, that's needs to happen. Yeah. Like it, and that could be as inclusive or as broad as you want it to be. Okay. And that's kind of why I want to stay with the name that recreation. Well, I agree. Yeah. Because it's not just focused on that. Yeah, that was that was my thought. Because yours, a lot of your stuff goes above and beyond that. So. 
I mean, one other thing here, I mean, the original planning was done in 2000, 2001, 2002, that's 16, 18 years ago. I mean, the needs of the town has changed. Uh, I've already, tonight I've heard Dog Park. Um, I know the playground is still out there that's looking to be built. Yeah. Um, there's a number of things recreationally that can all be brought into a, to a plan, and this committee could be doing all of that. And, it, and it's not just one little thing, it needs to encompass all, and. Mm -hmm. Would be a great idea for that those. would also help you recruit committee members yeah absolutely it's not just a single community center single focus thing kinds of ideas it could be really wonderful for the, for the town you're all set marcus yeah, um, yeah i'm all set okay. i did have the uh the playground committee listed down here i mean that mm -hmm. is part of that happen okay <laughs> any more discussions <laughs> seeing none all those in favor thank you 10.2. This was yours, Bob. Yep. And speaking about mission statements. Right. Mission statement for the Sylvania site. No, yeah, we, we got one approved uh, when we formed the task force and we wanted to amend it after our meeting last Friday. Uh, paragraph two to include an additional sentence that would say endeavor to put an environmental covenant in place by June 1, 2019. And to give you a little background, we really can't do anything with that property um, until number one, Sylvania agrees, but number two, until the Department of Environmental Protection uh, puts an environmental covenant on the deed of that property, which controls moving forward how people work on that property if they do anything to it what reporting requirements are, what happens if you dig down and discover something that's environmentally um, dangerous. All those kinds of things need to be in the deed, in a covenant. And we would like to work with DEP and our town manager to see, to encourage that that covenant be put in place Please. at an appropriate time, but hopefully by June 1st of 2019. So your mission statement language covers that? Yes, it does. Yeah, that's, it doesn't. Yeah. So I, I request the committee to approve the, the change in the mission statement of the yes. Sylvania Task Force okay. to include that that sentence. So this have a motion on that. So moved. Second. I'll second it. Discussion. All those in favor? Thank you. Ten point three. We have two quick claim deeds. One is for yeah. three hundred nine Manktown Road in Waldeboro and three thirty one Manktown Road in Waldeboro. They have a motion on that. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Anything else before we go into executive session? Okay. In a motion to go in executive session, do you want this language, Julie, or is it something different? It'll be personnel matters under 1 um, MRSA 4056A to discuss personnel matters within the uh, Waldboro Police Department. Make a motion that we go into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 405-6A as what, please? Personnel, personnel, personnel issue? Matters. Yep. Have a second? Second. All those in favor? Thank you. Let's turn it on. I move that we come out of executive session. Second. second. Discussion. All those in favor? Make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Discussion? Discussion in here? All those in favor? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And the meeting ended prior to 8.